Hi, my name's Alistair Chapman, and I'm just about to head off up to northern Norway on my annual Northern Lights trips. Um, every year I go up there to shoot the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis. I really enjoy doing it. And I thought you might like to have a look at the gear that I take with me when I do it. And uh, right now I'm shooting this on a Sony Action Cam, and I always take a couple of those with me. But down on the floor down here is the main equipment. So let's have a quick look at what's going with me. And it's a lot of kit. So what do we have down here? Well, we have all kinds of things. We have, we'll start up here with the video camera. I'm sorry about the picture quality. This isn't set up for a video shoot, really. I have an FS5 camera, and that'll be my main video camera for running around during the daytime, filming the ice fishing and the other activities that we do during the day. Uh, lots of batteries for everything. Right, so moving along. Uh, everything's laid out, actually. That's a good point. I have everything here laid out on the floor like this so I can see at a glance exactly what I've got. And actually that was quite useful this morning. I looked down here, I looked through everything, I have a mental note of what I need to take and everything else, and I realised actually that there was an adapter that I hadn't uh, packed. It wouldn't have been a big issue I hadn't have taken it, but I, I did want it. And everything, everything laid out like this is a really good visual way, especially if you're a visual person, of seeing what you've got. Once you've put it in your bags and everything else, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to keep track of what you've got. So lay it out like this. Um, checklists are also useful. But what I've done here is I've got the cameras at the top. Then below the cameras is batteries, power and media. And then below that is accessories to go with them. So at a, at a glance here, if we take this middle camera here, which is the Sony A6300. I have the camera with a lens on it. Below I have the battery grip, spare batteries, Metabones uh, Speed Booster Ultra adapter for getting wide angles of the Aurora. And then there's a cleaning kit and there's some uh, ND filters and things like that for that camera. So everything's laid out like this so I can see that I've got everything. So the next camera moving along is the good old Sony A7S. Really is a low light king. This camera is is one of my really is my favorite camera for shooting in low light. And the Aurora isn't something that's particularly bright. So the A7S is really key to this shoot. And again, moving down, battery grip. There's two batteries inside that battery grip and more spare batteries there. And actually there's another pile of spare batteries somewhere. I've I've got about 8 batteries per camera. Um, and then below that I've got some of the action cam stuff because here is another one of the action cams, the FDRX 3000 4K action cam. There is the remote control with screen there and then all sorts of clamps and grips. So there's the wrist straps for the remote controls, suction mounts, uh, handlebar mounts that we can use on the snow scooters, shock absorbing mounts, and then I have a handheld gimbal for it as well. And there's a whole bunch of the um, sticky pads and all the other stuff for that. So lots of things that we can use with the action cams. And one of the things that we'll be doing during the trip is dog sledding and snowmobiling. So we'll make use of the action cams and things like that for that. Now moving along here, I've just got an empty bag here. And this is just really sort of general accessories. So I've got a couple of extra uh, lens adapters. They're E-mount to Canon EF. Uh, adapters. These are the Comlite ones that I'll be using for some of my Canon lenses. I have a macro extension tube. Plan to try and do some uh, macro stuff while I'm there. And then all my chargers. Charger for the FS5 and four chargers for the batteries that go in the A7S and A6300. One of the big issues shooting the Northern Lights is it can go on. It's going to be dark for about 12 hours while we're up there and the Northern Lights could potentially go on all night for all 12 hours. So there may be the need to shoot continuously for 12 hours. So what I've actually got is per camera, I actually have 12 batteries and then four chargers. So hopefully even in the cold weather, I'll be able to keep going. Uh, here I have a Genus ND filter, variable ND filter that I can use on the, coming back over here, 18 to 105 millimeter kit lens that is currently on the FS5 if I want to use this lens on the A6300, which doesn't have ND filters of its own. So I have both 
regular ND filters and a variable ND filter that I can use with the A6300. And if you're going up to somewhere like Norway, where you have a lot of snow, a lot of ice, and generally speaking during the day your images are going to be very bright, you really, really need ND filters. The FS5 here, my video camera, no problem, ND filters are all built into the camera. But for the DSLRs, you want to shoot during the day in those sorts of conditions and you want shallow depth of field, ND filters are a must. So I have a variable ND filter and a various screw on ND filters as well. And then along here is my lenses. They're all in their cases, in their pouches. This is a Samyang 12 millimeter Canon mount lens. This is a really nice wide angle that I'll be using for some of my Aurora shots. I'm just get it out of the bag. Uh, really good for the really wide sort of panoramas and things like that. Really, really wide angle, full frame. So I can use that either on the A7S or with the Speed Booster Ultra on the A6300. Um, it's not the fastest lens, an f2.8, but that's not bad. I'll probably use this one for more for photographs than for video uh, and for time lapse. Um, of course, with the Speed Booster, that becomes an f1.8. It's, it's quite a reasonable, uh, good performing lens, good value for the money. This then is a Sigma 20mm prime lens. It's an oldish lens. I've had this one for a, uh, a number of years now. It's one of my favourite Aurora lenses. I actually bought two of these. Um, and of the two, I then picked the better one. Because, you know, even amongst what should be the same lenses, let me see if I can get it out of the box, there are a lot of differences. So I bought two secondhand on eBay, picked the better one of the two, and kept that one, sold the other one. Um, and what I was looking for is actually an effect called comma in the corner of the pictures. With wide angle lenses when you're shooting stars, instead of the stars being a little dot, there can be a little comma shape. And that's a little bit distracting. So I have one of these 20 millimeter full frame Sigma. So that can go, uh, it's, a, it's got a Canon mount on it. It was actually originally was a Nikon lens, but I've converted it to Canon. Um, so I have manual aperture and one of the things with northern lights and time lapse I really do like having that manual aperture ring much better than the electronic ones I feel for, for most of the things that I shoot. So that can go on um, the a7s or the a6300 again with a speed booster if I want. And this is f1.8 so that's quite a fast lens uh, and this, this really is sort of my go-to Aurora lens I guess. Now a new lens to my collection for this trip is this one in here and I'm not going to pull it out, it'll take too long. And this is, <laughs> yes, the Sony, uh, sorry, so, so, the um, Sigma 20mm f1.4 art lens. This is a gorgeous lens and actually I will get this out because this is quite interesting. This isn't the easiest thing to do, one-handed. So here's the lens. Again, very nice wide angle lens, a fast lens. This is from their art series of lenses, really good quality lenses. It's on a Canon mount again, so I can use Speed Booster if I want to put it on the A6300 or it's full frame, giving me very nice wide angles. But this sock that it's in, this was actually um, something that I had uh, knitted for me by my wife. And one of the problems you get shooting in the Arctic when it's very, very cold is frost building on the lens. When you point a lens up towards the night sky when it's dark, because there are no clouds, the heat from the lens actually goes straight out into space, believe it or not, and that causes frost on the lens. So any heat that you can retain in that lens just to, to try and keep some warmth in it is a big help. And this little sock actually really does make a difference with regard to the lens frosting over and icing over. So it's a, a, a useful thing. It looks a bit funny, it looks a bit weird, but um, it really does help. Next lens here is a uh, Tamron 16 to 300 millimeter super zoom. Not a fast lens, f3.5 to 6.3, but it gives me that 16 to 300 millimeter lens. I'm really just taking this one just in case we encounter the reindeer herds and things like that, and I need a long lens. It's a useful lens, it produces a good picture. It saves me having to take a dozen different lenses, just having that 16 to 300. Canon mount again, so use it with either with the um, Comlite adapters or the Metabone speed booster, depending on which camera that I'm using, because all of these can go on any of these cameras, really. 
So that's the sort of cameras and lenses that I'm taking. Of course, we have controllers, time-lapse controllers for shooting time-lapse. Uh, a couple of these. Um, there's some more in this bag here. And power cables, uh, power adapters for charging, mains adapters for the country they were going for, and other charges that I need. Hard drives. I've got three two terabyte hard drives. Um, hopefully, I, I'm, I'm expecting to shoot about two terabytes worth of uh, material, and that will be then backed up to multiple drives. If I go over two terabytes, then I have to start dividing it up amongst the, th the, the six terabytes in total that I have. A uh, very important thing going to a remote location is a cleaning kit. So I have a blower, I have sensor wipes, uh, there's a lens pen in there, uh, lens wipes and things like that. Also, I also have a large lens cloth, but this is really useful. You just don't know when you're going to bit of dust or dirt's going to get on your sensor, ruin all your shots, especially if you're doing stuff in low light and things like that. If you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't have a lens cleaning kit, it's not good. So small lens cleaning kit and sensor cleaning kit always goes with me. A toolkit. So I have some miniature jeweler screwdrivers. I also have a Gerber or Leatherman type tool and a small torch. And that goes with me everywhere. Filming at night, so torches. And up here is recording media. And there's more in here. And there's already cards in every camera. And I have roughly, um, I think it's about a terabyte of SD cards, so uh, quite a bit of, uh, of media there to record. I'll have a laptop with me as well so I can back up as I go. The other things that I have here is tripods. So my primary tripod is my Miller Solo Legs, carbon fibre legs. These go very high and very low and uh, a Compass 15 head. And this is the, the nice one. The nice things about these Miller heads is that the greases that they use don't freeze. Um, so I can shoot at minus 20 degrees and I know that this head isn't going to freeze up and lock up on me. Um, a lot of cheaper tripods will actually freeze and lock up in those temperatures. And then we have a slider, simple slider with a controller here. So I can set this for time or for interval and various other things. Just allows me to do some nice time lapse shots through trees and things like that of the Northern Lights in the Aurora. And one thing that I've done actually that um, for this year is every camera is going to use one of these shoes. Now these aren't the most expensive or the best shoes in the world, but I've got about a dozen of them. Every single camera, every single tripod, every single mount is using the same quick release mount. So if I need to swap cameras over from different tripods or different mounts and controllers at night or whatever, I can do it very quickly and very easily by having the, the same mount on everything. And then uh, finally here, this is a little um, timer head that I have. And this allows me to program in uh, a time and a number of degrees, and then the, the head will rotate over that period. If you do choose to buy one of these, do bear in mind, if you want to do an angle shot, you need a ball head on top. So the, the, the pan part, this bit, must be level so that when you pan, the horizon doesn't tilt as you, as you pan. So this bit has to be level and they need a ball head on top. And again, with this very same mount, a couple of tripods. And I'm just trying to, one of the things I'm trying to figure out at the moment is I'm very limited with my weight that I can take on this trip. Um, I can take this bag, which is a really good new bag from Camraid. It's actually designed for the FS7, but it works really well for carrying all sorts of other things. Um, one of the nice things about these bags is they have dividers that are, are attached with Velcro so you can reconfigure the bag, bag for all kinds of things. And one of the dilemmas I've got at the moment, so I've got limited baggage allowance and limited space in the vehicle and snow scooters. And I'm just trying to figure out if I can actually get all of this kit packed away within that allowance, within those limits. And then of course there's Arctic clothing. I'm going for two weeks. Um, potentially it's going to be 20 degrees, maybe even 30 degrees below freezing up there. So I've got to have the right gear. And this stuff takes a lot of space. Um, just the boots alone. So these are my Arctic boots with a thermal liner. It's silver foil backed. And I tell you, look, I, I cheat a little bit. Heated, electrically heated insoles. One of the best inventions ever. Remote control, I can turn them on and off when my feet get cold. But just a couple of these takes up a huge amount of space in a bag. And then, you know, even just things like socks, you know, super thick 
really warm socks that uh, I don't know if you can see that really fluffy nice warm socks all of this stuff takes a lot of space so my challenge right now is going to be to pack all of this away check it one more time it's been checked once just going through it now doing this video has been a useful check for me again I shall check it one more time to to really make sure that I have got absolutely everything if I forget it I really am screwed there's no way I can just go in a car to the town and buy it because the nearest town only had well the nearest town is over an hour away by snow scooter and I think the population of the town is less than 2,000 people so there's no electronics store there's nothing like that nothing at all the nearest large town where I could probably buy camera stuff and electronic stuff is about six hours drive away so I've got to make sure I've got everything um, need to be self-sufficient for the two weeks that I'm going to be up there so exciting really looking forward to the trip and I shall have a video diary of how it goes and keep you posted as to what I'm doing and more stuff about exposure cameras shooting technique time lapse and all of that stuff I hope this video wasn't too boring it's a bit drawn out but I think it is interesting to see you know I've been doing this for a very long time now how I like to arrange my kit just before I pack it so I can see that I've got everything camera at the, camera at the top um, batteries underneath media next to it accessories underneath and you can see it all in a line make sure you've got every bit that you need inevitably though there's always some little tiny thing that you forget hopefully it's all there and I'm praying it will go in my bags and I've got my little weigh scales and I should weigh my bags and make sure I'm not going to get stung for a fortune in excess baggage and everything else so thank you for watching stay tuned for the next installment of my northern lights adventure